Hello students, today we are starting with the chapter Molecular Basis of Inheritance. Under that we will see Introduction, Structure of DNA and Packaging of DNA. Okay, so what exactly is the DNA? So as we know that DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and DNA is made up of smaller units or monomeric units called nucleotide and a single nucleotide is further have three components nitrogenous base which can be a purine adenine or guanine or pyrimidine like thymine or cytosine rna is also a nucleic acid which is also having nitrogenous base a g and c but instead of thymine they have uracil okay coming to the next point which is uh, second component of the dna or nucleotide is deoxyribosugar but in case of RNA, this is ribose sugar. Okay. The difference is in deoxyribose sugar, there will be one oxygen will be missing at second position of the pentose sugar. But in case of ribose ribo sugar, it will be having oxygen here. Okay. I will write. In case of RNA, there will be oxygen here. It will be for RNA. And if it is only hydrogen, it will be for DNA. That is the difference between the sugars. Coming to uh, phosphate, if only one phosphate molecule is present, it will be called monophosphate, like adenosine, monophosphate. If it is two phosphate, it will be called adenosine diphosphate or if there are three phosphate group, it will be called adenosine triphosphate. Same will be repeated for guanosine, thymine and cytosine. Okay, so we call it adenine as adenosine when there will be sugar added over along with it. Okay, so adenosine, monophosphate, diphosphate or triphosphate names can be given. Okay, so if we talk about a uh, different nucleotide of DNA, it will be ATP, GTP, CTP and TTP. Adenosine triphosphate, adin guanosine triphosphate, cytosine triphosphate, and thymine triphosphate. Okay, so these are the nucleotide which is involved in formation of DNA. Okay, once so they, how many phosphate they have? They have three phosphate. Once they are incorporated in DNA, they will be losing two phosphate, and only monophosphate will remain in the DNA. That we will see in the detailed class. Okay, so pyrimidines, which is there is cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Thymine will be there in the DNA only and uracil will be there only in the RNA. Other will be common to all. Purines are adenine and guanine. What is the difference between both? Pyrimidines have six-membered ring. Whereas purines have nine-membered ring. If you count all them, there are two rings made up of nine members coming to the structure of dna this is little more structure of uh, detailed structure of the dna okay so sugar and phosphate they form the backbone of the dna whereas nitrogenous bases they are towards inside and as we know dna is double helical structure it has two strands both the strands are running in opposite direction one is from three dash to five dash Another is 5 dash to 3 dash. And in between, there is hydrogen bond between the uh, nitrogen bases. Adenine and guanine, adenine and thymine are connected with double hydrogen bond. See here. And guanine and cytosine are connected by triple hydrogen bond. Okay. So adenine to thymine, guanine with cytosine. So, uh, sugar and phosphate, they are forming backbone. Nitrogenous bases will be towards inside. Coming to the actual structure of DNA. So, two, two strands of DNA, when they are forming hydrogen bonds, and they are twisted over one another in such a way that this much of the DNA is twisted at 360 degree. 
okay and this much of dna will be having fixed number of bases depending on dna to dna this will be called minor group major group and these are the hydrogen bonds okay diameter of the dna is 20 nanometer the distance between two base base pairs or bases is 0.34 nanometer Okay, this is uh, again comparing the structure of DNA. DNA is a double helical structure. Double helix is there. There are two helixes or two strands uh, running anti-parallel to one another where RNA is having only one strand. This is one more difference between RNA and DNA. Two differences we have already seen. Okay. There is one more uh, term given in the chapter which is called central dogma given by Crick. So what he said that DNA gives rise to RNA or coding the RNA and RNA giving uh, coding the protein. This is how flow of information happens. DNA passes information to RNA and RNA passes information to formation of proteins. And this process is called central dogma. So central dogma is a process in which genetic information flows from DNA to RNA and from RNA to the protein in a linear manner. It will be called as central dogma. Coming to packaging of DNA. So DNA is very large molecule. If we talk about uh, the number of base pairs in prokaryotes or in eukaryotes, DNA will be very large. In case of uh, eukaryotes like humans, if we see the length of DNA, it will go in, into meters, up to a meter or two meters if we talk about diploid DNA content, okay? So we can, storing this long DNA is very difficult. So that's why a proper packaging is required to store the DNA. How we do that, we will see in the next slide. So what is nucleoid? Nucleoid is the packed DNA in prokaryotes, like bacteria. So we know that DNA in prokaryote, it's a circular DNA. And it is also like quite large compared to the uh, cell uh, structure. Okay, so see, here it is given. So DNA is a negatively charged molecule. There are some positively charged proteins. These red color structure given here, they are positively charged protein. These interact with the DNA and helping in folding the DNA to make it a little smaller so that it can it can easily fit in a cell and it can stay in, in a particular area. It, it should not be spreading everywhere in the cell. Okay, so you can see here the packaging. And when that packaging happens, we call it as nucleoid. Coming to uh, eukaryotes, in case of eukaryotes, the packaging of DNA is more complicated. Here also, there they have shown that DNA is very large, up to 2.2 meters per cell. So when we are packaging it, we name it as nucleosomes. Okay. So here also there are some positively charged proteins are involved because DNA is negatively charged. Okay. So this circular structure which is there, it is a positively charged protein and it is called histone. It is further made up of eight monomeric units. That's why it is called histone octamer. Okay, so one histone octamer, DNA is wrapped around this octamer so that we can compress the DNA. And such nucleosome structure, there are multiple in the whole DNA. You can see here. Okay, this is the state DNA molecule. Then there will be folding in the form of nucleosomes. Nucleosome will be further folded to compress the structure. These structures will be further folded and folding goes on. And finally, it forms a very compressed structure called chromosome. Okay, so you can see a very large amount of DNA is stored in a very small structure called chromosomes with the help of nucleosomes. So this is in case of eukaryotes. Thank you, students.